In the previous tutorial, we have discussed how to create a musical marble animation using rigid body physics in Blender. Now in this second part, we'll discuss how to add a music of your choice, how to start with any random music and create this animation, following that musical track, so that they are perfectly in sync. Let's say we take this music, We'll create the musical marbles based on this audio file or this music. You should ensure that there is no prelude or gap, the music should start from the beginning, and it should have a good rhythm that our animation can follow. But before we do anything, we need to first convert this music into a series of timeline markers, as we can see here, and we'll do it within Blender using a script. So remember that you have to right-click on the Blender EXE, and select the option Run as Administrator. Once Blender opens, we have to go to the text editor, from here. Then click on this new button for a new script, and paste this code. This code is given below in the video description, it will install a module in Blender called Librosa. This module is required in order to do the audio processing. Let's open the system console, and then we can execute our code. In the console, you can see the installation progress, and after the installation, you'll get a successful message like this. Please remember that we need to run this code only once, no need to run it every time. Now we can start with our Blender file, for the musical marble animation, where we have set up rigid body physics for these objects. So this ball is set up as an active rigid body, and these musical notes are set up as passive objects. We have discussed this thoroughly in the first part of this tutorial, you can check it from the link given below in the video description. Before we do anything, we need to identify the frame number when the ball hits the first musical note. We can just run the animation and get this frame number, so we can see that it is frame number 26. Now we'll add the markers in this timeline based on the music file. We can do it manually as well, but we'll automate it with a script, so let's open the text editor and click on the new button. Then paste our script like this, which is given again in the video description. The script is ready to use, you need to only change the location of your audio file here, within a pair of quotes, and then simply run this code. Once it is done, we can go back to the viewport, and you'll notice that the script has created a series of markers here, following the rhythm of our song. But we need to start this series from here, just when the bouncing ball hits the first musical note. So hover your mouse near one of the markers like this, and press G on the keyboard. Then move your mouse, and place it exactly on frame number 26. And this is where we'll also add a speaker, to play the music simultaneously, so from the add menu, let's add a speaker. Now go to the speaker tab, and click on this open button. We need to select the same audio file here, which we want to convert into the musical animation. Now, go to the playback options, and change this first option, to sync to audio. Let's then play this animation from the beginning. So from this quick test, we can see that the music is in sync only for this first marker, where the ball hits the first note, and this is correctly placed, but all other notes are currently out of sync, we need to rectify their positions, so that they also get perfectly synced, with each of these markers on our timeline. So let's go to the frame, where we have the second marker, and we can see that the ball is here for this frame, but we wanted to hit this second note at this frame, so we need the ball somewhere near this location. And to make it happen, we need to tilt this first note, to rectify the angle of reflection, and fine-tune its position as well. Now calculate the physics, up to this frame number. Then we need to bring this second note close to this ball, and change its orientation, so that the ball is bound to hit this note at this frame number. Now calculate the physics again, and let's go to the third marker. We need to again find out where the ball is situated for this frame number, and we'll bring our third note right there. We have to ensure a direct contact or an overlap with the ball, and we may need to change the position, or the rotation of the note. Now let's recalculate the physics, and then verify, where it goes. We can actually test it once from the very beginning. So, we need to now place our fourth note, so we'll select this whole thing, then press Shift D to duplicate it, and place it in the correct location, to overlap with the ball for the fourth marker. But if we recalculate the physics and play it again, we'll discover that the ball is bouncing off heavily from this fourth note, so we need to modify its physics properties. We'll change its bounciness to say 0.8. We have discussed these settings in great details in the first part of this tutorial, so here we'll focus only on the music part. 
We need to do the same steps for each marker and place the notes. First calculate the physics to get the position of the ball, then duplicate a note and place it in the correct position with a slight overlap with the ball to get a collision. Let's calculate it again and play it from the beginning to verify. And once you complete the setup, it will look like this, with sound. Now, we'll discuss about few issues that you may encounter while working with this method, and some issues that you have reported. First, you may have too many markers here for your audio, technically these are called onsets. The script can detect too many onsets from your music, but you need not consider all of them. Like we have two markers here, close to each other, we can ignore this marker and consider only this one, and also this one, to create the bouncing of the ball. But if you are unable to create these markers at all, let's say you are unable to install Librosa for some reason, or you can't run Blender with administrative privilege, the script won't work in that case, but you can still create the markers from your music manually, for any particular frame. And the speaker object can be very helpful in that case, let the speaker play your music, you can manually select a frame, and then add a marker for that frame from here. Likewise you can add all these markers manually for your music, but adding them using our script is definitely far easier. The speaker can also start playing the music from a wrong frame, it's possible that the speaker is playing our music from frame number 1, but we need it to start only from frame 26. There is no field in the speaker properties to control the start frame, so we need to open the NLA editor. If we scroll down here in the left side, we'll find an entry for soundtrack, under the speaker object. You can press G to grab the soundtrack, and move it with the mouse, so that it starts exactly at the desired frame number. Next we'll discuss about the materials of our musical notes, since we have received several questions on this material setup. So the shader node tree for these notes looks like this, we have used a mix shader here, which connects two different shaders like this. And we have added two key frames, one is at frame number 26, and another at 27, so the material will change from its base color to emission, just after the collision at 26. But the problem is, when you try to set up this material for another note with a different color, it will reset the setup which you already did for all other notes, so everything gets messed up. This happens because we have created all these notes by duplication, so the materials are linked to each other, and changing one of them will change the others as well. You have to first select all the notes together, then go to the object menu, and under relations, under make single user, select the materials option. The notes will now have a private copy of their materials, and you can set up each of these materials separately, based on the frame number when the ball is hitting a note. Then we can render our scene for an output like this. I hope you like this series on musical marbles, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.